Welcome to the seg second segment of Citizens Forum being filmed on Wednesday, July 17th in the beautiful Memorial Arena in Victoria. I'd like to thank our volunteer crew and the Shaw staff who make it all happen. Our guest in this segment is Jessica Ernst. Jessica lives in uh, Alberta, about, I think you said, north west of Calgary? North, northeast. Northeast, northeast of Calgary. And uh, we're going to talk about fracking. Uh, maybe, Jessica, you can start off by telling us what fracking is. Well, very simply, fracking is drilling an energy well bore. That's all part of the process. Then they blast holes in the casing so that they can inject under great pressure frack fluids to shatter formation. They're after the unconventional resources, oil or gas, in a variety of formations, coal, sands, shales, and they have to shatter the formations to How force the resources. How big an area to is a fracked area when they're fracking one well, let's say? It depends on whether it's a vertical well or a horizontal well. Okay. Some of the companies now are, are drilling down, then going horizontal up to three kilometers. They can do numerous wells on one location. I just read, I think the highest that I've read so far is 67 wells on one pad. So they can cover quite a large area, but they're doing many wells in a very small area and then multiplying them many times. So and fracking means fracturing. So what they do is they inject under a lot of pressure water and chemicals into the rock and essentially blow the rock up to release the gas. Yeah, a good way to visualize it. In fact, Incana has, has used this on their website where if you imagine the cracks in a windshield when a rock hits it and you see all these little cracks spread, that's what they're, what they're after. And it's the resources, the methane's a good example. It adheres to formation tightly. The conventional oil and gas used to build in pools and it would flow by itself up a wellbore. These resources are reluctant. They're tight. They're tightly stuck to the formations, the oil and the gas. It does not fro flow freely, so, so they fracking. have to force it to let go. Is fracking safe? Is fracking safe? Well, in my experience, I live fracked now. I don't think so. I used to. I work in the industry. I have 30 years experience. I believed with proper laws and regulations, it could be done safely. But everywhere it seems that they're fracking, People are being killed, there are accidents, there's spilling of, of toxic fluids, drilling fluids, dumping, intentional dumping, then the fracking of formations. The methane has now been released and it's leaking up well bores, getting into aquifers. There have been homes that have blown up in Pennsylvania directly caused by fracking, the gas releasing into water and into homes. My water is too dangerous to even have connected to my home. So where you live in, in Alberta, northeast of uh, Calgary. You are on a well? I'm on a water well. My little neighboring community though, I'm not in the hamlet of Rosebud. They're a population of about a hundred and they have community wells as well, but it's a municipal water system and their water got fracked as well. They have methane and ethane in that water. They get 40 to 50,000 visitors. They have a dinner theater there. There's a golf course and there's little hotels. So they're, they're also living with dangerous water. Are they drinking it? Yeah. Is it safe to drink? No, but the government says it is. Are you drinking your water no, on your well? No, I wouldn't drink it. And Canna fractured right into our drinking water aquifers. And for years, I've been trying to get the government and in Canada to tell us what chemicals they injected. And we still don't know. Now, you said you worked, you have worked in the industry for 30 years. Uh, doing fracking or researching no, no, fracking or? No. I, I didn't do fracking. Most of my work was consultation, which is what's very interesting about now living fracked because the company did it in secret. And when people started asking questions because water wells were going bad, they blatantly lied to us. They looked us right in the eye and lied. And they had already fracked our drinking water supply. My you didn't know? No, and I work in the industry, and most of my work was consultation with communities, First Nations, guide trappers. Telling them it was safe? Yeah, no, not about fracking, other things, but environmental impact assessments, cumulative effects assessments, and socioeconomic assessments. And I was being fracked and didn't know. And of course, being, having it done in secret and then being lied to, with the data not made public, it's very difficult to uncover what happened. 
Now, there's a lawsuit. Who are you suing and why? I am suing Encana Corporation. They're Encana's... Good for you. Good oh, for thank you. you. They're Encana's largest natural gas producer. They're not the largest in the world, but I've been told they're one of the nastiest companies, uh, most punitive. I'm also suing the Alberta government Good. for Good. unlawful activities as well as Encana's breaking the law. And I'm also suing the Energy Resources Conservation Board, our energy regulator. In Alberta? Yes, because they broke the law too. Not only did they break provincial laws, they violated my charter of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. They violated my charter rights. So when did the lawsuit begin? We first filed the first legal papers in 2007 to save statute of limitations while we were trying to get the data. I've used freedom of information requests. It was refused me. I've spent thousands of dollars trying to get the data. It's been a full-time job trying to uncover the cover-up. We served the parties their first legal papers in 2008 and then we were allowed an amendment and we went public with the lawsuit in April of 2011. Now, I've never really heard about it, so although you went public, it hasn't been as big news as, for example, uh, um, the Calgary, what's the name stampede. of the hockey team? Yeah, the Calgary, Calgary Stampede. stampede or, the, uh, yes. Yeah. Well, some of the media reported very well on it. Unfortunately, there's a big clampdown on media coverage of hydraulic fracturing. This is happening all over the world. Most of the time, the reports that I've read, a lot of the mainstream media are reporting verbatim the press releases the companies give them. Most of them are dishonest. A lot of them are blatant lies. And the real stories, I'm only one of many water contamination cases in Alberta. There's a lot of other families, the Zimmermans out of Wetaskiwin, their water got bad after nearby fracking. Ronnelly and Sean Campbell near Pinoka, Alberta. Bruce Jack near Spirit River, Alberta after fracking nearby himself and two industry gas in water testers blew up in a very serious explosion when his water well ignited during a testing day by industry to test for the gases in his water. So say that again, his well blew up? The methane, his water well is so dangerously contaminated with methane and other hydrocarbons that when these two industry men came to find out where the gases were coming from because they can fingerprint where they come from and the well the methane in the water well ignited created a terrible explosion burnt down his pump house all three men were seriously injured in hospital Bruce Jack for a month so I mean to me I, I think fracking is an absolute disaster uh, an environmental nightmare mm -hmm. um, Ms. Christy Clark, our Premier, is basing the future of the province on natural gas, which will be uh, fracked. So you can see the direction we're going in. Um, you mentioned that uh, the judge in your case was removed by, well, maybe that's not the right word, but... Oh, it's a good word. I mean, I... was removed I, by yeah. Stephen Harper. Yeah, or the so, Stephen Harper government. Yeah. But uh, can I come back to that? And I'd just sure. like to go to your Premier. Okay. One thing that the people of BC need to look at is the Site C Dam expansion. The water and the electricity that is being told the people of BC need, I believe the Site C Dam is, is that massive cost. That is being done for fracking. It's going, the electricity and the water, I think, will be for the fracking companies in the Horn River play. And the LNG, the liquefied natural gas at Kitimat and the other locations needs massive energy. So they're going to get the electricity, not the people of British Columbia. Yes. And I don't believe your Premier is being honest with the people at all. The Premier might not even know the truth. Now back to how bad fracking is. Yes, indeed, I'm doing this lawsuit and Canada has publicly said my case has no merit. It should be thrown out. But they did not argue that in court. We had a very important court hearing in January. And the most important part that I think of my lawsuit happened in that court hearing where we get to decide, the judge has to decide whether or not a citizen of Alberta can sue the energy regulator for failing to protect a citizen and our groundwater and if they can be sued for violating our Canadian Charter of Rights. And right before the judge was to rule, Prime Minister Harper, his government intervened and promoted the judge to the Court of Appeal, essentially removing her. My lawyers told me, when I told them about this, I was shocked and, and they said, oh, don't worry, she will have to complete her ruling. 
of what she heard. So my lawyers asked her, will you be doing the ruling on what you heard? And she said, that's not an option. That's unconscionable and shocking. And all Canadians ought to be horrified by this. And none of the mainstream press reported on that. I'm horrified. I'm embarrassed to be Canadian by this. But the interesting contrast to that is the federal government intervened in a provincial lawsuit that supposedly has no merit. All of a sudden, Jack, I realized my lawsuit has massive power. I'm a little tiny citizen, a middle-aged citizen, and yet I have the federal government interfering in a provincial lawsuit. Plus, I think the Harper government reacted, which is not that good. All of a sudden, I realized my lawsuit's really important. I knew it was important. Now it's tremendously more important than I could have ever imagined. So once again, we see this, this triumvirate of the corporations basically running roughshod over all of us, the politicians paving the way for them, yes. making it easier for yes. them to do whatever they want, and the media keeping the public in the dark and yes. misinforming us. This is what we're up against, not only on your issue, but on a thousand issues. Well, and on your site we... CDEM, and the taxpayers are paying for it, and you're being misled about that. On many, many things, on the transmission lines, yes, absolutely. So now there's a new judge in your case, and uh, he is going to, he or she is going to make the decision. Maybe, maybe not. It's been six months. The new judge is the Alberta Chief Justice, so he's actually a new judge for my case, but he's been around a while. I would have expected a judgment by now. Interestingly, April 15th, they had my lawyers and the judge in Encana and the defendants had their first sort of telephone conference call to introduce each other to the new judge. And the new judge said to Encana, is there any good reason you cannot file your statement of defense? And I kind of couldn't come up with one. So they said, no, Your Honor, we'll file right away. It's now past July 15th. That's three months. Before, after the first month, my lawyers asked in Canada, when are you going to file? No later than June 15th. That came and went. Now a month has passed. We still have no statement of defense. We still have no judgment. I think everybody thought I was going to quit when Prime Minister Harper took the judge away. So once again, what is the judge being asked to rule on? Well, there's a number of things. Uh, one is, the, the, when you do a lawsuit, the defendants have all kinds of abilities to kill you financially, emotionally, burn your heart out. And one of the things is filing endless motions to delay. So the regulator in the Alberta government, the Alberta government, they filed motions to, to strike out paragraphs in my statement of claim. They didn't like the word contamination, but the water's contaminated. They said we shouldn't be allowed to use that word. They also didn't like that we were talking about all the other water contaminated in my community. I'm not the only one. I'm the only one suing. But they wanted those all references to the hamlet and other people struck. The regulator, they argued a motion that they shouldn't have to respect a Canadian's charter rights if they're a terrorist. They actually put that into a legal brief. If they're a terrorist. Like you. I, yeah, me. They, they put in writing that I'm a terrorist in their legal brief filed in the court with no evidence. My lawyer said this is so bad because they, that's against the law. You can't go making stuff up about somebody with some kind of... And this is coming from the government? The regulator, the energy regulator, which really is a point... I mean, they're, the pub, they're supposed to serve the public interest. And they have no of course evidence... they don't. Right, and they have no evidence of calling me a terrorist. No fi I was never charged. I've never been arrested. I have no criminal record. And they did that in an official legal brief. And they used that argument to say that they can violate a Canadian's Charter of Rights. Because they violated my Charter of Rights in writing. When I was trying to present the evidence of non-compliance to the regulator, they wrote a very nasty letter trying to intimidate me. They ruled me making criminal threats without evidence, copied the police, and... You said you, you made criminal threats yeah. against them? Well, yes, and the public. I was a threat to the public. But they haven't, the police never came and fingerprinted me or threw me in jail. And they signed this letter so I ha for my lawsuit. It's a very important part of the lawsuit because I have a signed document of the regulator, like your oil and gas commission in BC. 
the regulator violating a citizen's rights instead of holding in Canna tight to the law and the regulations. They let in Canna break the law, I didn't break the law, and yet they treat me like a criminal. And once again, we see the corporations, their politicians, and their media. And I mean, it's, it's getting to the point of life and death, because where do you go to hide? I mean, you're in Rosebud, Alberta, and, and they're coming after you, you know, to the point where they're poisoning your water. Well, and not only that, when W5 aired a very small segment on my, on my water and the bad treatment I received from the regulator, right two days later, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police came and intimidated me and tried to harass me for a week. They called themselves Harper's new anti-terrorist squad, and I caught them lying to me. They came to interrogate, even though my lawyers said, hey, Jessica's been through enough. We'll come to you. If you have questions, we'll give you all the help you need. They tried to tell me they wanted me to help them train the officers in the anti-terrorist squad. That's how they were trying to get in the front door. This is Canada. And Canada is the terrorist. That's I right. Mean. I said to the police who interrogated me, I said, have you gone to the regulator, the government, and in Canada, have you asked them about what in Canada did to the Rosebud aquifers? They fracked right into a community's water supply. With hydraulic fracturing, they promised they'll be way below where the fresh water is, our drinking water supply. They fracked right into it. And I have the data to prove it. But the police don't go to Encana to ask them why they did such a criminal thing. And why not? I believe the police in Canada are now controlled by Prime Minister Harper and by the... They're, they're in position to protect corrupt politicians, corrupt regulators, but also oil and gas companies that are breaking the law. So. I would agree, the police, one of the jobs of the police is to protect corrupt politicians, corporations, yeah. and regulators who refuse to regulate on our behalf. That's right. I and mean, this is what the country's come to. But it's not just that, Jack. I, I think that's part of it. The other part of it is this is why I don't believe hydraulic fracturing is safe. If fracking were safe, they wouldn't need to do these things. If truly fracking were safe and had never contaminated water anywhere, which is a big lie, they wouldn't have sent the police after me. They wouldn't have had an, a regulator lawyer harass me and bully me. They would have, and Canada would have admitted their error and been held accountable and mitigated the problem. But because of the bad things they're doing, to me that shows, as a scientist that's worked in this industry, that's what shows to me that fracking cannot be made safe. How big is fracking in this country? Huge. Okay, tell us, because nobody knows. We never hear about it. No. In Quebec, for example, a couple years ago, they had done 31 wells. Some of them weren't even fracked yet, and they were already leaking methane. Half of them, more than half of them, were leaking methane. The government told the companies, fix the leaks. The companies tried. They couldn't. They now have a, a, a short-term moratorium ban. Depends on who you talk to, what they're calling it. But the companies want to frack for oil there, and they're already putting big pressure on the Quebec government. Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, big protests in New Brunswick. They want to keep fracking out. Ontario, the Tax Assessment Review Board already stated a couple years ago, a methane-contaminated property, you can't tax it. Zero value. It's a hazard. Manitoba, they're doing a lot of fracking. They've got problems already. Saskatchewan, Alberta, of course, British Columbia. It's a nightmare. It's and a it's, nightmare. It is. An environmental nightmare. The media won't report on it. That's right. Here in BC, it's Christy Clark tells us it's the way forward. It's the road to safety and prosperity for us all. It's an, what's wrong with that woman? Well, it's not just it's not just Christy Clark. It's all the politicians all of them. right now. Our, we were promised jobs too in my community. There was one job hauling the toxic waste. For British Columbia people, they're fracking in southeast British Columbia as well. There's there's apparently large holdings in central British Columbia where lots of people go to retire. Kelowna area, water shortages, Vancouver Island, they're planning to frack also. I think we're out of time. Jessica Ernst, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you very much for for doing this fight on behalf of all of us. It's it's you know You're very welcome. Yeah. Thanks for watching this segment of Citizens Forum.